Okay, in this video we're going to focus on exponential growth and decay. And in fact we've already seen that in uh, section 4.1. But uh, what we're going to talk about now is we're going to um, express these functions in terms of base E um, instead of base B. In 4.1 we had a base B where B was bigger than 1, you had growth, remember? Well that, that, that's going to correspond to, to base E uh, when you have a, this constant R being greater than 0. It turns out it's, it's much easier to work with when you use base E. Your, your com computations are easier. You'll see in just a minute. Now this important feature of exponential growth is called the doubling time. If you have an initial amount, N0, and the question is um, how long does it take it to double? So how long does it take it to get to here? Well if you go over here to the graph, we're talking about the value of T where the initial amount doubles. That's called the doubling time. Now when you have a decreasing exponential function, uh, that's, when we, that's what we call exponential decay. And in 4.1 we were talking about uh, that being a case where the base is between 0 and 1. Well, when you use base E, that, that's going to correspond to where the base is le to where the exponent is less than 0. Okay, so you can always do this. And the equations look the same, it just turns out whether the, the, this constant, this constant by the way is called the relative growth rate. Uh, whether the, whether, whether the rel relative growth rate is positive, then you're going to have exponential growth. If the relative growth rate is negative, you're going to have exponential decay. On the homework, when they give you the relative growth rate, the problem becomes very easy. All you have to do is plug in R into the equation, and you can pretty much go right to the answer. But usually it's not that easy. Let's look at some of these problems. Here, look, at, look, at, look at this one. Uh, suppose you have a, a small town, let's say, where the population is growing exponentially. Uh, in 1980, we're going to call that t equals 0. You have 24,000. And then in t equal 10, or 1990, you have 30,000. And the question is, when will the population be 40,000? So the goal here is really to come up with the equation. We, we've got to find n0, and we have to find r. Once we do that, we can answer the question. It might be kind of nice to organize your work, too. Um, at t equals 0, you have 24,000. At t equal 10, you have 30,000. So, to find n0, uh, all you have to do is observe that this is the initial po pop population. That, that's fine. But let's say you didn't know that. You could plug in the point 0, 24,000. So 24,000 equals n0 e to the r times 0. e to the 0 is just 1. So this, the right side becomes n0. So that, that's how you can prove that n0 is the initial amount. Anyway, now to find, to get the equation, let's plug in the other point. Let's plug in the point that says that at 10, t equal 10, you have 30,000. You get 30,000 equals 24,000 e to the r times 10. We're going to find r, and we do that by taking the logarithm, the natural log, but first we divide by 24,000. Makes it easier. Now let's take the nat natural logarithm. And on the right side, you just get 10r, right? So, uh, to finish the problem, or to find r, I should say, you divide by 10, so r is 0 0.0223. Notice r is positive. That means you have exponential growth. Uh, so I think we're ready. If you put it all together, this is this was our goal, by the way. You, you, you find n0, you find r, now you've got the equation. Now you can answer the question. The question is, find, find t when the population is 40,000. So you just set the population equal 40,000 and solve this equation for t. Before you take the natural log, divide by 24,000 to get this. Then take the natural log, and no notice the right side is it's just point, point zero two two three t. This is why we use base e because when, when you when you when you do this process, there's less work. So solving for t, you get t equals about twenty three years. Seems like a reasonable answer. Let's keep going. Okay, in this problem we have another exponential growth problem. It says a population of bacteria grows exponentially, in increasing by ten percent each hour. So find the doubling time. Notice they don't tell us how much we start with. It turns out it doesn't make any difference. Uh, the doubling time is independent of how much you start with. Again, uh, we're, well, our goal here is, is to find R, basically. And then we can answer the question. Uh, what does that say at 10% each hour? When T equals 1, the amount present is 1.1 times the initial amount. So 1.1 uh, A0 equals a0 e to the r times 1. a0's cancel, so you get this. Take the log of both sides, natural log, 
and so r turns out to be 0 0.095. Again, r is positive, which makes sense because it's exponential growth. So the equation, remember the goal is to get the, the equation, is a0 e to the 0 0.095t. So how do you find the doubling time? The doubling time is defined to be the time it takes for the amount to double. So if you start off with a0, how much will you have when it doubles? You'll have twice the initial amount. So all we have to do is find t when, 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 when n of t equals, um, in this case, a of t equals 2a0. a0 is cancel. You get this. Take the natural log of both sides. You get that. On the right side, you just get 0 0.095t. And divided by 0 0.095, you get that t equals 7.3 hours. Amazing. Let's do some more. Okay, here's one with exponential decay. So when, when, we, when we work this problem and we find r, the relative growth rate, it should be negative, right? Here we want to find the half-life. We know that it goes from 8 grams to 5 grams in 80 years. Well, that's almost the half-life, isn't it? 8 grams to 4 grams, that would be the half-life, uh, that would be the time. So if this is 80 years, I'm guessing it's about 100 years maybe for the half-life, maybe a little bit more. So let, let's, um, let's organize our work like, like this. And, t equals 0, you have 8 grams, right? At t equals 80, you have 5 grams. And the question is, find t when you have 4 grams left. Um, so what we're going to do is, is basically find the equation. We're going to find n0, we're going to find r. Once, once we find n0 and r, we can do anything, we can answer any question. Uh, n0 is 8, and if you didn't see that again, you could just plug in 0 for t and 8 for n of t. E to the 0 is 1, so that's how you get n0 equals 8. You don't have to write this step. If you can go right to it, that's, that's fine. Now how do you find r? Let's use the fact that in 80 years you have 5 grams left. So set n of t equal 5 and t equal 80. Uh, to, to find r, you would first divide by 8. And now you take the natural log of both sides. The right side is just 80r. So when you divide by 80, you get negative 0 0.005875. Notice r is negative. So let's put it all, all together. Your, your equation, now that we found n0, and now that we found r, you get this. So what is the question? Find the half-life. All you have to do now is set the amount equal to 4, which is half the initial amount, and solve for t. Uh, we would first divide by 8, then we would take the natural log of both sides. On the right side, you just get negative 0 0.005875t. Divide by the coefficient of t. Remember I said it would be a little over 100? Boom, it's about 118. That's what we thought. Suppose you're given the half-life and you want to find how long, how long it takes until there's 20% left. 20% left. So again, let's organize our work like, like, like this. We have a... Uh, at 240 years, you have half the initial amount. That's what the half-life means. That's what the half-life means. At 240 years, you have half the initial amount. So the question is, what time would it be when you have 20% of the initial amount? Now, we're going to use the half-life to find r. Uh, you set t equal 240 and set the amount equal to 1 half n0. The n0s cancel, so you get this. That, 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 that says the half-life is independent of how much you start with, just like the doubling time. Take the natural log of both sides, you get this. The right side is just 240r, and so when you solve for r, you get that r equals negative 0 0.00288. Now, so this, so let's put it all together here. We've got the n of t equals n0 e to the negative 0.00288t. To, to find how, how long it takes before 20% is left, you set the amount equal to 0.20n0. That's 20% of the initial amount, and you solve for t. The n0s cancel, so you get this. And then uh, you, take, uh, you take the natural log of both sides. The right side is just the exponent. And the last step would be to divide both sides by the coefficient of t, negative 0 0.00288. And we get about 559 years. Now does that make sense? If the half-life is 240 years, if you repeat the half-life again, you go from 50% to 25%, right? So in, in about uh, 480 years, you'd have 25% left. So that would make sense that it would be um, uh, 500 and something for 20%. Seems like a reasonable answer. All right, we've got to go. Bye-bye.